Hey guys, what's going on? It's Sean of Third Rail Fi, and I hope you're having a beautiful day today. So right now, as we live and breathe, there is a palace coup taking place in America, in the White House currently, within the Democratic Party. A palace coup is happening now. There's all kinds of of, of, of different flavors of coup d'état. Some quite violent, some are an uprising, a revolution of the people. Uh, some are soft and gentle, and you don't even know what's really happening. And one of those flavors is called the Palace Coup. And within Palace Coup, there is two flavors. So many flavors of overthrowing, my goodness. So, the Palace Coup is a type of coup d'etat where one faction within the ruling group displaces another faction within the same group. This can incur within a government, a royal family, or a ruling elite. Unlike a traditional coup, a palace coup does not involve the overthrow of the existing government or regime, but rather it's a change in leadership or power within the existing structure. And so if you think about what's happening in the White House right now, they don't want the Democrats to be turfed. They want the Democrats to stay in place. They just don't want Joe Biden to be driving the boat. They want him out, but everything else to remain. And so now we have the flavors of palace coup. So the, a soft palace coup is a bloodless coup where the existing government or regime is not overthrown, but rather the leadership is changed through a peaceful transfer of, of power. And that's obviously what they're going for. That is the plan. And for, for the most part, that's what's happening. That's how that's going. Although you know Hunter and Jill are like, old Biden, old boy, you, you don't, you don't, you don't go anywhere. You're staying. We're going to fight. We're going to fight. Leads us to a palace revolution. Palace revolution is a type of palace coup where a group of people within the ruling group rise up against the existing leadership and take control. So we've gone from a soft palace coup. We're kind of going into a palace revolution right now. It's kind of evident when you start looking at everything. Like here, we have Morning Joe, co-host Mika Brzezinski accuses Obama of being behind the Clooney op-ed. Claims his presidency wasn't historic like Biden's. This is a full-on civil war going on right now. And if, if you're unfamiliar with the Clooney op-ed it's basically the long and the short of it is george clooney not that long ago held a super duper cadrafragilistic ex yellow fundraiser for joe biden and was like joe biden's the best president ever like three weeks ago or whatever four weeks ago and then and then the bad debate happens and then george clooney writes this thing being like you know what Joe Biden's just not the same. He wasn't the same even at the thing, at the fundraiser. And so therefore, even though he's a good dude, he's just not president material anymore. And then everyone stands up and says, hey, George Clooney, listen, if he didn't have that bad debate and you knew that he was mentally gone at your fundraiser, would you have said anything? No, you wouldn't have. You would have just let everybody vote for a potato because you're actually a bad dude. You're a bad fella. You would have allowed a potato to be elected and you would have had this knowledge. You wouldn't have said anything because, you know, you're Democrat all the way. Vote blue no matter who, except if it's Joe Biden because you're a part of the palace coup. So this, this op-ed by Clooney has really rattled a lot of cages. So MSNBC's Morning Joe co-host Mika Brzezinski claimed on Thursday that former President Barack Obama was behind George Clooney's New York Times op-ed demanding 
of President Biden not seek re-election. This wasn't George Clooney, Brzezinski said of the op-ed during Thursday morning's broadcast of the show that Biden is said to watch frequently. What do you mean? asked Joe Scarborough. What, what do you mean? Her husband and co-host. <laughs> okay, okay. Here's a here's a weird ADHD side thing. Do, do you ever look at a couple? Maybe they're walking on the street, or maybe it's it's these two meat sticks here on you know their husband and wife, and you think they're husband and wife. So at some point they have to have you know being intimate adult activities. You know, hopping on the good foot and doing the bad thing. You ever like try to like envision it? Like, what would that look like? What would what would it really look like if this if, if this Joe Scarborough was 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 banging his wife, this Mika Brzezinski? What would that look like? I suspect she's probably pegging him, probably. But do you ever do that? Is it just me? Am I am I just the weird one where, where you look at a couple and you go, I wonder what that looks like? Ah. <laughs> Oh, goodness. I wonder if this is going to survive the edit. Anyways, carrying on. What do you mean, asked Joe Scobro, her husband and co-host. He totally gets pegged. You, you know it. You know it. Or he sits in the chair. He sits in the chair that's in the corner of the room that faces the bed. And you guys know what that chair is, huh? The cock chair. He sits in it, I bet. Well, while... Very muscular men, I suspect, have 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 their way with his wife, and then he is probably there with with his, you know, his member locked in a little cage, going, "I wish I could touch it," or something like that. I who knows? Who do you think it was? Who do you think it was? I mean, he has the most beta energy. You can say the name, you won't melt. It's not Voldemort. Are you saying you think Barack Obama put him up to this? Like, the left is in conspiracy mode. They start, it's like, good. I'm glad the left is in conspiracy mode. Now, I'm not talking about like crazy blue and on conspiracy, earth is flat stuff, right? I'm talking about, you know, that there is a government machine. And the, and the gears will keep turning and they will just try to get power instead of instead of these guys just being like little talking heads, just saying the line, saying whatever it is that they're saying. They're actually opening their eyes and looking past, I guess, the veil of government secrecy or whatever. Like, oh, Joe Biden's not the president because he's incapacitated. He He's in bed by eight and somebody else is sitting at the Resolute desk. Who is that? Who's driving them? There's bigger questions. Finally, they're asking them. That makes me so happy. They're probably too stupid to do anything with, with this new fangled ability they have. But it still makes me happy in the moment. Brzezinski responded, I think that Barack Obama has a lot of influence. And I think that there's, there's a, a lot there. There's a lot there, Scarborough said. There's a lot there, Brzezinski repeated. <laughs> oh, God. Scarborough added that Biden will still deeply resentful, was still deeply resentful of his treatment and resentful not, not only of the Obama staff, but also the way he was pushed aside for Hillary Clinton. He's always felt like an outsider, always felt like people looked down on him. Brzezinski then took aim at Obama, saying his presidency wasn't as important as that of his vice presidency. She was commenting on a photo in which the two men appeared alongside Clooney and Julia Roberts at a Los Angeles fundraiser last month. I'll tell you, there were two people in this picture, and one has had a presidency that was absolutely, undeniably historic. She said, referring to Biden. Well, I mean, it's historic because it was stolen. That, that's historic, I think. Barack Obama knew in advance of George Clooney's bombshell call for Biden to drop out, but didn't object. 
So, believe it or not, MSNBC Morning Joe might actually be correct about this. They might actually be correct about the gears behind the palace coup. Because that's what this is all about. It's about the palace coup that's turning into a palace revolution currently in the White House. Former President Barack Obama was given a heads up but didn't object to Oscar-winning actor George Clooney's bombshell call for President Biden to drop out of the 2024 race. A new report says the Hollywood A-lister had called Obama in advance to warn him that he was he was going to do the op-ed in the New York Times. How do they know? How do they know that he called him? I mean, that's, that's immediately what jumps out to me. Does that jump out to you? The Hollywood A-lister had called Obama. How? 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 I mean, I called my wife earlier today. I mean, she's at work. I called her. You didn't know that up until this moment. I told you. Someone has to let the cat out of the bag. Just saying. There's a palace coup happening. The ex-president didn't encourage Clooney to make the remarks, but didn't try to stop him. <laughs> oh, goodness. That's baloney. Stephen Colbert taunts Biden with Dr. Seuss-style rhyme. Is he mentally fit? Can he serve a whole term? The knives are out for Biden. Everyone is getting in on it. Late night host Stephen Colbert used the Dr. Seuss style rhyme to poke fun at President Biden amid concerns about his cognitive health and ability to serve as president. Colbert, long one of Biden's most dependable allies. So dependable he would even do a little vax dance. The most cringiest thing I've ever seen in all of my life. Anyways, he has sharpened his mockery of the president following his debate performance. Is he mentally fit? Colbert said, reading out of a mock book titled, Oh, the Places for Joe. Colbert proceeded to read passages from the book, a parody of Dr. Seuss's uh, Oh, the Places You'll Go. Can he serve a whole term? Colbert said. Can he beat RFK with, with his brain full of worm? Just ask him. Just ask him. The man loves to talk as long as you don't ask him before 8 o'clock. Join Joe Biden as he explores a wonderful world outside of the Oval Office. The parody book description reads, Here's the thing. Maybe Biden can't win. Or maybe he's the only one who can win. I don't know what the right answer is, and I'm not alone. Knives are out. Now, Gretchen Whitmer, who is literally the daughter of Satan. Satan herself? Probably not. The daughter of? Easily. Easily. Gretchen Whitmer says, It wouldn't hurt for Biden to take a cognitive assessment as, as the president uh, denies that he needs it. Yeah, it wouldn't hurt for him to get his old noggin checked out. This woman, Gretchen Whitmer, is evil. She faked her own kidnapping. She locked everybody down and then went off on holiday. Because the only place that didn't get locked down was where she went on holiday. In like northern Michigan or whatever. Like, she is evil. Absolutely just evil. She is in the sort of in the betting odds. Maybe not necessarily the highest up, but she's in the betting odds of who's going to replace Biden. Or maybe who's going to replace Harris as VP, right? Because, you know, Harris might need to get bumped up. So Harris will need a VP. So she's been pushing. There's been all kinds of headlines being like, oh, uh, Gretchen Whitmer is pushing Gretchen. You know, Gretchen is, is, is trying to be president. She's trying to be VP. She's trying to do all this stuff. So now she's coming out vocally being like, yeah, Joe Biden should get his, his, get his cat scanned. This is how evil this broad is from Kyle Becker as of this morning. New Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer signs a bill or signs bills into law stopping recounts based on allegations of election fraud. So if there's an election that looks suspicious and you think maybe there's a little bit of fraud at play, it is now going to be against the law to recount it based on election fraud. There is, in fact, 
with without a shadow of a doubt, there is a shadow campaign, not only in the palace coup to get Biden out, but to, to get the Democrats across the finish line. They, they're not giving up. A reasonable candidate at this point would just give up. They would build up their backbench. They would keep Biden up there. Biden would lose, and everyone would just clap and go, oh, good good try, Biden, a good try. Now it's time for you to retire, Sur survive four years of Trump. And by that, we all know the answer is thrive. Everyone's going to thrive in the upcoming Trump years, not just Americans, but everyone else. Like that is that's the tide that 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 raises all ships across the earth, and then 128 happens, then they can pull out their 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 um, candidates that their their backbench that they've been building up for the last four years, and then they can they can go again. Like that's what a reasonable campaign would do. Reasonable advisors, that's what they would suggest. But no, they're they're still going for it. And they're being as dirty and sneaky and as shadowy as possible to do it. Like, they have no chill. So it's now going to be against the law in Michigan to recount based on election fraud. So Whitmer has stripped the board of canvassers of its investigative authority. Any election fraud claims now go to a county prosecutor who will undoubtedly bury the case. A recount is only carried out in cases where there are purported mistakes that have the potential to alter the outcome of the election. It also revises numerous rules for clerks, raises the deposit to file a recount petition, and alters the guidelines for election law violations. The removal of safeguards against election worker meddling and the elimination of the canvassers' investigative authority, according to opponents, will make it more difficult to combat fraud and jeopardize election security. State Rep. Jamie Green said watering down protections is counterproductive when several red flags have arisen within the state's election process. For example, there being no system to tell if someone votes in multiple states, a real issue facing the state of Michigan, as evidenced by the Secretary of State removing some 170,000 people no longer living here from our voter rolls only after she was sued. Democrats continue to make it easier to cheat in the U.S. elections. Yeah, Michigan Gover Governor Gretchen Whitmer labeled evil as she signs controversial election recount and fraud bills into law. She is evil. So the daughter of Satan, I think, is, is what we could probably say to that. The daughter of Satan. And the reason I bring Whitmer into this whole palace coup thing, in case you're wondering, is because we're dealing with shadow campaigns. So we're going to seal the election. She wants into the, into the VP spot. She wants into the presidential spot. She wants that. She is making sure that Michigan can't be flipped, that Michigan stays blue. All of these little pieces are happening behind sort of the, the veil, behind the scenes. The, it's the larger Democratic machine at work. And then we have here, Politico says dozens of Biden delegates are organizing a letter urging the DNC to change the rules to make the nomination of vote a secret ballot and to free delegates to vote their conscience. So now delegates who are sworn to Biden because he won them in the primary, they voted for him in the primary, you know, following the way that the process was supposed to go. They're now the delegates are trying to, to switch. They're trying to be unfaithful delegates. They're trying to break the rules. A comment by Greg Chamberlain says, so let me get this straight. The same people who accused Donald Trump of performing a coup are performing a coup against their own constituents to get rid of Biden. They did the same thing to Bernie Sanders in 2016. I hope Democrat voters are paying attention. They're not. Because they're not the brightest. 
they're not. Well, yeah, the, the delegates are doing their best to uh, get out of, I don't know, their promise. And lastly, before I wrap this up, not entirely related to this, loosely related to it, but I thought it was funny. So from Politico, again, conservatives see a conspiracy dun, 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 around Joe Biden's stumble. This article is saying that conservatives are seeing a conspiracy around the media. And conservatives are saying, yeah, it's not a conspiracy. What are you talking about? It's all about covering up Joe Biden's nonsense. Since before the 2020 election, Republicans and their conservative allies have loudly proclaimed that Joe Biden's lack of mental fitness disqualifies him from America's highest office. It's true. We have been since like 2019. We were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Something isn't quite right. What are you doing? And the media has been like, what are you talking about? What is that tinfoil on your head? You need to sit down. We love Joe Biden. He is as sharp as the tack. And we're like, no, look at him. What is too much pressure? Bada calf care. Tick tack, paddle, quack, quack, quack. Like, what is he saying? And they're like, um, obviously, you're just, you don't speak Democrat. Now, in the wake of the president's disastrous performance in the presidential debate, many of those same voices are taking up a different rallying cry. We told you so, and the media covered it up. That's what the conspiracy is, apparently. The conspiracy is that the media covered it up. And we're like, yeah, the media is saying, oh, no, we've only just noticed this. Isn't that crazy? Biden was doing so good, and then he just sort of fell off a cliff, just fell right off a mountain. And we're only noticing it now. That's so wild. And we're saying, no, he's been like this, sharply declining for a long time now, and you've covered it up. You're only now trying to save face. And so you're saying the conspiracy is that you're saving face. It drives me nuts. But of course, because this is a conservative conspiracy theory, we know that in six months they're going to go, yes, yes, we know what we did. We covered it up. because. Six months is what it takes to go from conspiracy theory to conspiracy fact. Anyways, that's that's Politico saying those pesky conservatives are saying that if we were covering it up. Yeah. It, <laughs> oh goodness, that's that's unbelievable. So yes, there is there is a palace coup that is taking place. Um. It's gone from a, a soft palace coup to uh, what might be a palace revolution. That's, that's pretty crazy to me. Anyways, thank you for watching this video. I love you all, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace. Peace.